welcome to this Juniper Getting Started video. Uh, before we actually get started, if you enjoy this tutorial, then hit the like button. If you want to comment, then please feel free to do so. If you have friends, family or colleagues, etc., that you believe would be interested in the video, then please feel free to share. And please hit the subscribe button, which you'll find in the bottom right hand corner of this video. So in pretty much all of our videos, we utilize Eve NG, which runs on for us, we run it on VMware Workstation Pro because you have to have something for the VM to actually run on. So with regards to that, to get EVENG itself, you can go here, www.eve-ng.net. We utilize the professional version. There is, of course, available a community version, but it doesn't have the same feature set that the professional version does. As I've mentioned, we utilize EVENG on VMware Workstation Pro, which you can get from www.vmware.com forward slash products forward slash workstation dash, dash pro dot HTML. You could also, also download and utilize the Workstation Player, but as I've already mentioned, we just utilize the VMware Workstation Pro to run the EVENG VM on top of. You don't have to worry too much about remembering these addresses because on the description of the video itself, you'll find these addresses. They're all linked uh, within that text area. So welcome to the world of Juniper. I'm pretty certain that some of you or a lot of you may well hail from a different networking background. And what I mean by different networking background is just a different vendor. So, for example, you may come from the Cisco world, you may come from the extreme world, Brocade uh, or any one of the other vendors. So it may well be that you've started a new position and maybe the major vendor is Juniper that you utilize in your new position or new organization. It may be that you just want to, as we say, dip your toes into the pool of networking and wanted to start with Juniper Networks. Uh, in my humble opinion, you've probably chosen the right vendor to start with as in uh, Kaylin Dash Tech's humble opinion, we believe that Juniper Networks offer the most intuitive CLI. So Juniper Networks actually utilize their own OS, which is labeled as Junos. Now, Junos is actually based on free BSD or to be 100% accurate. It's actually a cut down version of free BSD that they then add their own little sections into the kernel that allow their Junos version to run on it correctly. Uh, but it is free BSD all the same. So when you drop into the shell, which we'll learn in later lessons, you'll see that it's based on Linux free BSD. Now, Juniper actually utilized Junos on pretty much all their equipment. So all of their appliances utilize Junos which is quite a good thing for network engineers that are learning uh, about Juniper and Junos because you only have to learn the one version of the operating system. So for example, Cisco, you may have to learn the iOS, you may have to learn it on Catalyst, you may have to learn a slightly different way of it, of utilizing it within their Nexus devices. Uh, and so Junos, for example, is also available on their firewall appliances, their SRX appliances, whereas with Cisco, uh, their appliances, their firewall appliances are a little bit different. So now we have the initial introduction to Juniper and Junos out of the way. Let's start with the actual initial configurations where I'll explain what happens, why it happens, and what we need to configure when we first boot up a Juniper appliance. Uh, for this tutorial, we're utilizing a VMX. However, as the process is the same for all Juniper appliances, this tutorial is applicable across the Juniper range. We've actually connected to this device utilizing Telnet because 
in a future lesson, we're going to cover SSH access to the device. So when you first boot up a new device, you'll be presented with the screen that we see here. And the way that you can tell if this is a new device or a device that has had the complete config wiped is by this word here, amnesiac. This is applicable on the whole Juniper range. So you can always tell if it's new or as I've said, if the whole config has been wiped. So the initial login to Juniper, the first login that you always utilize is you just put in there root. You'll notice that it's actually put you directly into the shell. And we can tell that by this here. Okay, this is a typical Linux prompt. So how do we get into what we would traditionally see as the CLI? Well, the way we can do that is we just simply type CLI. This that's just come up, we can ignore for the moment because this is part of what is on every Juniper device and it will continue doing this until we remove it. So when I've done CLI, when I've typed CLI here, you'll notice that we're now in what's called operational mode. We can tell it's operational mode by this arrow to the right here. And it will always come after the host name of the device itself. And we haven't configured a host name, so it is just root. So how can we stop this text from appearing? Well, this text is appearing simply because there is configuration within this system on every new system that you may require or you may not. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to remove these configuration lines that are causing this to occur. So what we need to do is we need to go into configuration mode, which in Cisco, as you know, is configure terminal or conf T as we utilize. We have two ways that we can go into configuration mode, and I'll explain the differences in um, a secondary tutorial with regards to this. OK, we can either use configuration or we can use edit. Edit is the preferred option. So if we go into edit mode, you'll notice that it's now changed to configuration mode by this sign. Sorry, let me get that up again by this sign here. So what we can do is we can do the commands run and we have to utilize run. It's the same as the do command in Cisco because we're at this level. We have to do the run before we can do the show. So we do a run show configuration. Now, if we only use run show configuration, you may not be able to read the configuration as simply as you could in a secondary method that I will show you in a moment. So if we look at it, we almost see it like a programming language where we have the default stanza, the secondary stanza, and the third stanza, and then the command under this. Now, if we want to see what this looks like in a more readable format, we can do the same command again. And like Cisco, we can use the up arrows and the down arrows. So we do this and we do a pipe as in Cisco display set. And that shows us it in a more readable fashion. And these are the commands that we need to remove. So for example, you're seeing that there's an auto image upgrade. Well, there you go. There's one that we don't need. And the beauty of looking at it this way is we can just copy the command. And to remove that, all we have to do is say delete and delete chassis auto image upgrade. If we want to remove the DHCP service, we can do a delete and we can copy just to the DHCP service itself. And we can enter that. Now, this isn't actually going to stop anything yet because unlike Cisco, it doesn't do this automatically. We have to do what's called a commit in Juniper. And be before we can do a commit, I'll show you what will happen if we try and do a commit before we set a root password. So if we do a commit here, 
it'll say commit failed missing root authentication now to get the root authentication we simply use the set command so we do set system root and we can tab like in cisco root authentication and we'll just use plain text password you have to put a capital in here somewhere so i'm just going to utilize password with capital p and again now we can do a commit but if we want to check that the commands that we've put in are satisfactory to the os we can do a commit check and it'll tell us if, it, if, if the configuration that we've completed is good or not. And it tells us it is. So now we can go ahead and commit this. So let's do a commit. So we've done a commit. We've completed that. And that should stop most of this text that's scrolling up the screen. So now we can do again a run, show, configuration, display, set sorry my typing so we do a display set currently at the moment i also for this lesson for this tutorial do not need syslog so i can actually go ahead and delete and again we'll copy this section of it we only need to go up to the stanza syslog so we can remove the syslog and we can commit check again and again the configuration check succeeds if we want to see what we're adding and what we are removing we have to be in configuration mode but we can type show compare and it compares the candidate configuration the candidate configuration is what you are currently configuring it's not the running configuration so you have the candidate configuration you have the running configuration so let's have a look at what we're doing this sign here tells us that we're taking away it would be a plus if we were adding and we can say oh yeah okay i see what we are taking away here and that's correct it's everything under syslog under the syslog stands or the syslog level so again we can do a commit and if we do again a run show configuration and we have a look at it as a display set we see that all we're left with is the root authentication so let's quickly run through again what we've completed in this lesson because this is just a very quick introduction to the cli and junos itself so if we exit and we exit again and we exit again now when we log in we will have to log in as root and we've got to put the password in now and we made it password and again you'll note it's dropped us into the shell as i said whenever you log in as root it will always drop you into the shell and we type cli and we can do uh, the same as Cisco. We can use the question mark to see what's available to us. The show is exactly the same as Cisco. So we can show, and again, a question mark, and it will show what, what can we look at in operational mode. We can look at all of this. Okay, we can look at whatever we want. Make good usage of the question mark so that you're entirely sure about what you want to do. Again, we can go into edit or configuration so we go into edit mode and here again we can do a question mark and it will show us what we can look at what can't we look at we can do show parameters here as well so we can look at different things within the configuration section we've looked at how we view the actual configuration in two methods and we have to use run here which is the same as do in cisco because we are in configuration mode we wouldn't have to use run if we were in operational mode so we do run 
show configuration. If we do it this way, it looks more like a programming language where we have our top level, our sub levels, or if you like, our top stanza and our sub stanzas. Again, here's another top stanza. And that's how uh, we can look at the configuration. If we're used to programming, that might make more sense to you programmers or scripters out there. If you want to look at it more like you would see in a Cisco perspective or with the actual set commands, so that if you want to delete anything or copy anything, it's actually easier to copy it and paste it. So we can do the up arrow and we can pipe and we can put in there display set. So that's telling us we're displaying the set command structure. And this might be easier to read for people from a different vendor environment because this is more, more normal to see this. So this is just a very basic introduction lesson. We're going to move forwards in the next lessons to configuring users, configuring classes, etc., which is the normal that you would do on any system or from any vendor where you want to configure local logons for the system. That's the end of this lesson. So if you do have any questions, then please feel free to put it in the messages. Please let us know what you think. Also, as a last reminder, if you enjoy this lesson and you want notifications of future lessons, then please hit that subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of this video. Thanks. Bye-bye.